November the 14th, we'll have our uh, topic is the full deck, and we're going to be showing the, the photos from the playing cards deck that we have produced, and they are wonderful, by the way. They're in the back of the back of the uh, room there if you'd like to peruse those and get you a half a dozen or so next <laughs> on your way out. So they're only $10. $10 a deck. They make great uh, stocking stuffers or whatever else. And we actually do have a picture of Nettie Chandler uh, Wilson, who was Susan's grandmother on there, and J.D. <coughs> so anyway, welcome. And without any further ado, I'm going to turn the program over to Joe. Uh, so he can tell us all about the Chandler family. So there's three here in Chandler family. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're great, great grandchildren. One here is my wife, Claudia. Um, hey, Claudia. You know, they referred to Claudia several times during the story, so that, that's who Claudia is. And uh, Jim, introduce yourself. I'm Jim Holt. And uh, I'm part of that clan too. You live in? I'm sorry. You live in? I live in Garland, just across the lake. I, I stay over here more than I do over there, though. <laughs> I don't know what it is. There's some kind of a draw. <laughs> Nancy. I'm Nancy Wilson Freitas, and my great great grandfather was Henry Chandler. And I live in Quinlan Cash area, but I work here at Rock Hall at the CBS on Horizon. Yay! Yeah. If many of you know anybody in the Chandler family, uh, I'd appreciate it if you would get one of these little, it has my contact information, and give it to them, because I'd like to chase stuff. I've got a lot of blanks in my family tree, and, I, and I'd like to find some more people. So if you know anybody uh, who are related to the way in the Chandler's,
started off as about 20 pages and it kept growing and kept growing. And now it's up to 450 pages. That's, that's the book I was mentioning up here. Uh, some, of the, some of the chapters, different family branches, of course, are not related to me personally, but they are for my grandchildren because of the, of, uh, the, the daughter's law and so on and so forth. Uh, I have a large section there about memorabilia stuff. And uh, in addition to the old scanned pictures and historic facts, and you can you can see the sort of stuff that I have uh, collected. I told about how the first TV on our block had a little bitty black and white screen, <laughs> and we went when I was a kid. We went to double features at the movies on Saturdays for twenty five cents. Couldn't do any better than Roger Roy, uh, Roy Rogers and Mont Kettle. Mont Mont Kettle. And then there were ongoing serials uh, each week, and one of them was Superman. And you know he would get these impossible situations, and you'd have to come back the next Saturday to find out how he, how he got out of the out of the mess. And he'd always Clark Kent would always uh, jump into a phone booth and take off his coat and tie and show his Superman costume whenever the world needed his superpowers. My grandson wanted to know, what's a phone booth? <laughs> no, I don't have any idea what happened when his street clothes in his wallet and he left in the phone booth. And then there was this health tonic called How to Call. It had 18% alcohol and seemed to be very popular in dry counties. <laughs> my grandkids have heard of the Beatles, but they didn't know who John Denver was. And does anybody remember poodle skirts and oh. duck tables when women started smoking? We told our grandson about how Claudius' dad was a bomber here in World War II and once flew with Jimmy Doolittle. Of course, he never heard of Jimmy Doolittle, so I had to give him a little uh, lesson about world history. We haven't even gotten around to talking about the part about what life was like before air conditioning and computers. But, and, and, using party lines instead of cell phones. You can always, you know, scan the old family pictures and, and put them into a book like this, and that, that way everybody in the family can share them and see the pictures and, and, and enjoy them together. Sometimes there's only one copy. Uh, the, the problem is lots of times you find incredibly fascinating pictures and you flip them over and they're not labeled and you haven't got a clue who in the world they are. So anyway, what am I doing here today? Well. While doing genealogy research, uh, I heard about a small cemetery out near the Chandler Landing office, and so I drove out to Rockwall to uh, see what I could find. And when you drive south on Ridge Road, you see an intersection with a street named Henry M. Chandler Drive, or Henry M. Chandler Drive. And a short distance down the road then, you see an octagon-shaped office uh, of the Chandler's Landing development on the right, and then on the left, there are those five glass steel condominiums that you park there in the parking lot, you'll see a small park and a grove of trees on the left. Nowadays, you see a small cemetery surrounded by a fence and a state historical marker. When I first sought out the cemetery, it was just some broken headstones, mostly flat on the ground, uh, and it was hard to find in an overgrown field. So, what's the story behind that cemetery, and who's buried there? And who is this fellow, Henry Chandler? Henry and Martha Chandler moved to Texas sometime between 1853 and 1857 and settled in Rockhall County, which was part of Kaufman County until 1973. Henry was from uh, Marshall County, Kentucky, which had previously been part of Callaway County. Uh, Henry's parents moved there in 1826 eight years after the land